Non-alcoholic spirits aren't a great value, and it mostly has to do with chemistry, because as we've learned a long time ago, most of us anyway, water and oil do not mix. And it doesn't matter whether you distill it or mix it, without a third ingredient, it's always going to separate. So whether you're making a hydrosol like these products here, it's not going to be as flavorful as something with alcohol, which readily dissolves the flavor compounds in the essential oils within your botanicals. So there are better methods, and these methods were determined back 150 years ago at the soda fountain, because let's face it, the soda fountain was all about getting flavors into water to make soft drinks. So let's talk about how we can do this better. We could take some old techniques from the soda fountain, and make better non-alcoholic spirits because I am a fan. I do like my cocktails, but I don't like hangovers. So having a non-alcoholic option as a intermediate drink is something I do like. So I do want to talk about this more. So let's talk about it. I'm Darcy O'Neill, this is Art of Drink. And again, oil and water do not mix. And that is the problem with a lot of non-alcoholic spirits. Spirits, because they don't actually have alcohol in them. And these are basically hydrosols. And if you know anything about steam distillation or essential oil making, you know that you'd basically place your botanicals in a still with water, distill it, the steam comes over carrying the oils with it. Uh, it's more of a physical as opposed to chemical method. But what you get is a layer of essential oils floating on top of a layer of water. And that water below the essential oils is called a hydrosol. And most people know a hydrosol as orange flower water or rose water. Those are pretty common. But the, these hydrosols, the one thing is, is that they're trying to contain the botanical oils or essential oils. And water just can't do that. No matter what method you use, without a third ingredient like alcohol, an emulsifier, or something like glycerin or propylene glycol, it just doesn't work. And I have to say I am a fan of the movement towards non-alcoholic spirits. I don't want to, you know, cause these companies any problems, but there are better methods to doing this, though they're not the easiest methods to sell. They're easier to do at the bar, which isn't going to help them. But there are problems with hydrosols, and this is a good example. This is a locally made gin that I bought maybe six, to, six months to a year ago. And it's got what's called bloom in it. And within hydrosols, sometimes you can actually get a fair amount of oil in them to start because the particle sizes are so small, it takes a while for them to come out of solution. And while that happens, if there is a bacterial infection or other issues it will cause this and it's called blooming so you'll get a cloudy mixture um, uh, it is not good to drink you need to throw it out because you can't tell if it's bacterial or not so again i do don't want to destroy any companies but i do need to be honest with the chemistry here uh, again obviously not sponsored by any of these doubtful that i'll ever be sponsored by any of them in the future but this idea that you can get oil and water is just not a chemistry thing. It's a known fact. And soda fountains dealt with this a long time ago. And it was this idea of getting essential oils to make soft drinks. How do you get them in there? There are methods, but it does require creative thinking or chemistry. Some of the other issues with these hydrosols is that uh, they do need preservative. So uh, sodium benzoate and that, they do need to be pH adjusted. So I measured all four of these, they are all at a pH of about three because preservatives like sodium benzoate only work in a narrow range of, two point, of a pH of 2.5 to four. So they're pH adjusted. These ones seem stable, but the key issue for almost everybody who tries these is that they're not that flavorful. So if you were to look at this compared to a gin, these have, you know, 25 to 50 times less essential oil in them than an alcoholic gin. So pinene, so these are basically terpenes. Uh, they're all the rage in the marijuana world right now, but uh, so you can buy them. 
these are like alpha pinene and alpha terpene. Uh, so they're basically carbon and hydrogen and they're oils. They do not dissolve in water. If they do, it's at about two milligrams per liter at room temperature. The closer you get to zero degrees Celsius, uh, it almost becomes zero. So you're looking at two milligrams per liter of pinene in these non-alcoholic gins and other flavorings, whatever these ones are. Whereas in actual gin that's been distilled with alcohol, you're looking upwards of 90. Typically it's around 60 to 70, but it could be 90 to 100 depending on how they make it. So when you're looking at two parts per million, and if you were to say there's a maximum of 100 parts per million, you're looking at a 50 times difference in the flavor profile. And that is the issue. You would need a lot more of this in a non-alcoholic cocktail to equal the flavor of this. There are solutions, and if you watch my channel for any length of time, you know that extracts, essences, and tinctures are the soda fountain method. And it's an odd thing where alcohol may be the solution for non-alcoholic drinks. And it's the quantity of alcohol we use and the concentration of botanicals in a non-alcoholic gin. So let me give you an example. In a tincture, you're going to use 10 grams of substance for every 100 mils of solvent. And in this case, you can use gin. Uh, I'd recommend navy strength of gin. Anything above 50% is always gonna get you a better extract. And if you've watched my videos on extracts, that's a one-to-one -one ratio, 100 grams of a substance to 100 mils of a solvent. We wanna do a tincture, and that's 10 grams of substance to 100 mils of solvent. But if you were to use a whole bottle of something, it would be 75 grams of your gin botanicals to one 750 mil bottle of gin. And basically you'd crush it up. You can watch the extract video uh, and you just crush it up, fill this thing with alcohol. So you'd have your, let's say we were doing one bottle, 100, one 750 mil bottle. You'd crush 75 grams of your botanicals, put it in your percolator, fill this up with gin, let it sit for 24 hours, drain it out, close the stopper, add another amount of gin to fill this up. Let it sit for another 24 hours, drain it out. And then on the, after 48 hours, you just pass the rest of the gin through this and you'd have 750 mils of a concentrated extract. And what you do is you put some of it in a spritz bottle. So this is slightly hazy because it's got a little bit of extract in it. Uh, but the idea is that when you do this tincture method, you're going to get something that's 10 times stronger than gin. And this is 10 times less strong as gin. So if you do the math, typically when you make gin, you're gonna use 10 kilos to 20 kilos of botanicals to make 2000 liters of gin. And that's gonna get you in the 50 to 90 parts per million range for your flavor compounds. And again, if you've seen my video on how a uh, grass substance generally recognized as safe, you can go to that guide and you can see typical usage in alcoholic beverages and the typical maximum is 90 parts per million. So when you do this, you're making, with the percolator, you're making something that's 10 times as strong as this and 100 times stronger than this, maybe even more, depending on what you're talking uh, the concentrations that are in there. So to use this is pretty simple. You would just basically, let's say we're going to make a gin and tonic. Each pump of this is a quarter of a milliliter or 0.25 mils. And that with two pumps of this, you're getting the equivalent botanicals of a gin and 10 times the amount of this or whichever one's the gin equivalent. So you just basically spray, spray your glass, and then you're gonna add your ice. And then you're gonna add your tonic. And then you're gonna take your spritzer with your extract and add it to the top. That amount so half a milliliter of this 
is going to be the equivalent using the extract method of this. So you're gonna end up with about five parts per million of flavor extract, which is what uh, standard pour or 45 mils, one and a half ounces of gin would give you in a gin and tonic. So hopefully that's clear because you can extract a lot more flavor into alcohol than what gin does. But doing this method where you're just making a tincture, concentrating your gin flavors, allows you to make a gin and tonic that is 10 times stronger than this with two spritzes. Now your alcohol content is 0.1%. So that's five times lower than what the government dictates in North America as non-alcoholic, and sometimes 12 times lower than what European countries dictate as non-alcoholic. Now, if you're adamantly against alcohol, there isn't a solution for you in this video, but in the future, I do have one, or a couple actually, on using emulsifiers, and emulsification is what allows oils to stay in water, that's what Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Sprite typically use to keep their beverages shelf stable. That is coming up in future video, it may be up now depending on when you find this video. But the reality is a small amount of alcohol may be a solution instead of paying the same amount for gin for something that's 10 times less flavor and has a shelf life that's way shorter than a gin or any juniper flavored beverage. So in my mind, this is the way to go. I'm okay with a, you know, this amount of alcohol that you put in here in two spritzes. You know, you're gonna find more in a banana, fresh baked bed, bread, or even something like, um, you know, fruit juices because yeast is everywhere and it's always fermenting and the human body handles alcohol just fine in small quantities. So to me, this is the option, a gin tincture made with gin. Uh, and if you need any guidance on making a gin formulation, uh, I'll post that over on my Patreon page. So basically, instead of making or buying these because they are not flavorful enough, your better bet is to make an extract or a tincture and use that in highballs. When it comes to making a martini replacement, that is never gonna happen. But there are ways to make non-alcoholic drinks that taste like alcohol. And if you've watched my videos for any length of time, uh, I'm building up to that. No, there's a lot of chemistry involved. Not difficult chemistry, but it still needs explanation. So I will eventually get there because I do love chemistry. I've been writing about drinks since 2004, but I started studying chemistry in 1989. And it truly is the thing that I love the most is all the chemistry and techniques and the ability to make really unique drinks. So stick around, subscribe, and we will get there. But uh, that is my general opinion on these non-alcoholic spirits. They're not flavorful enough for me. So these techniques will help you. So uh, give it a shot, let me know how it goes, and I will see you in the next video.